My name is uh, Jonathan Gabler and I'm working as a music manager since 2011 in Vienna. Yeah, run, ran some labels, run some labels. How many? Well, um, I'm halfway through the third now. I'm, I'm running the third label right now, but still um, it's not like I'm, I'm done with everything. So it's like I have three labels that I can funnel music through. Let's put it that way. And yeah. It makes sense to me, at least, I hope, to, to, the, to the rest of the audience, too. But yeah, maybe we can get to the point. Well, okay. So the, the three uh, labels are what? The one is the newest one that you're wearing right now, the merch. It's Breakdown Records. It's yeah. like a, a brand that was created by um, two singers and myself. And we started the company together on that, on that label, uh, most, mostly because we wanted to put out their music. Namely, Ames and Ilaf. Now there's only Ames and I left in the, in the company, so this is like what I what I do right now: promote Ames music, and um, it is like a holistic approach. So I, I do the whole management stuff aside from booking, but I only like my my job is to motivate bookers <laughs> to do their best jobs. Basically, Basically their ass. also yeah, right. Uh, you could put it that way, but I don't have to actually. They, they're pretty. <laughs> doing okay, pretty going, okay. Going political. They, they, they're, yeah, they're fine, no, no, no. Yeah. They're doing pretty okay. Like we have like um, uh, sixteen shows coming up uh, in the next uh, three months, so it's fine. Yeah, I saw um, the, the the tour with Ames, right? Yes. And you also like, play ba bass, yes, right? Yes, I also play the bass. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So this is like I'm, I'm the cheapest bassist available, so I'll do the job. No, it's fine. Like we we put everything we earn into into the company and divide it um, by two, basically, and this is what what I do for a living right now. So, um, so your main focus right now is label the break stuff. Or, or yeah, break, like, break them records, break, break them. Break, yeah, break right. Them the company, record. right. So, um, and what about the Pantare and uh, right? Pantare and and Clear Records are um, the things that I um, used to do more with. Like it's like um, when I started in the music industry, I was working very closely with my dad, and I still have my office uh, at his studio. He let me. Um, have a, a table there so it's pretty it's pretty sweet for me and yes we started when I was I was really young back then like I was 23 four or something and I started working um, as a in marketing for the studio basically we have rehearsal studios in the Gap Music Factory Gap uh, Music Factory right? Vienna yeah. right I started in the front office and then I like I didn't work my I didn't have to work my way up because Obviously, my dad runs the, the thing. Yeah, but still, uh, the responsibilities yeah. were uh, piling right. up slowly. So we we started to work with a with a band called Mother's Cake. Probably some of you know them. And this is when I, I took over the management position there. And I was completely I I, I had some idea because I, I made a crash course like in music management. It took me a year to comp, uh, complete it, and I just started while doing it and. I was very inexperienced, but also I was very motivated, and so I, I worked a lot. And we had the urgency, like, to to put out their music somewhere, and um, there was a just a need to do it. And uh, we we have like a it's also it's also a label. It's called Gap Music. Um, it's um, founded by my dad, and this is kind of the mother of everything. So everything started with Gap Music for me, and I was like, he wasn't caring about it at all. He was just having it for. The opportunity to be able to sign artists to it who he potentially sees um, as successful so i started to um, bring life to it and it was basically barren for eight years or something like that after he, he founded it yeah we were um, in search of a distribution service and uh, so i had to come up with the concept for the label um, to make a, like an application for back then physical Distribution was also... Um, Which year public. are we talking about? It was 2011, end of 2011. The studio opened 2008. The studio opened 2008, but the label is, uh, I think, from 2000... Uh, I think he founded it in 2000, and the last thing he put out there was on 2004. So there's, there was a gap, like eight or All seven. All right, so years. the gap music, uh, the, the, stu uh, the studio came in 2008. Gap Music the, Factory, the building, the building, yes, the, the new one. The new one, right. There's, a, there's an old studio as well. Yeah. Like the, the place where I grew up is uh, basically a studio also is it in vienna or it's, it's still in vienna it's very on the outskirts but yeah okay it's very remote and my dad wanted to um have a little more uh, openness in his uh, approach of work and 
that's why he founded the rehearsal and um, recording studio space in, in Atzgestorf, which is still very far from the center of Vienna, but it's um, a little less far. You can go there by train, so it's pretty pretty sweet. Yeah, so this this is where I basically socialized in a musical way, and right. So we had to we had the need to find a distribution service, and we were rejected by everyone. So this is when I started thinking strategically. Also, like the the new studio was struggling, like financially, it was um, we lost a big customer. Um, they were a regular um, customer who just made some TV overdub um, translation shit. So yeah, that that time we had to figure out some new way to approach the whole studio thing and also for myself i had to to figure out how to be able to access the market basically because back then cds and vinyls were still like vinyls were not that important but cds were very important at that time which is uh quite different right now so it's funny actually but yes so we i i can't i conceptually i thought about any, anything that i could think of and um since I've started working in a like an association with uh, two other bands aside from Mother's Cake, so it was Lausch and uh, Milk Plus, both very excellent bands. We founded an association. It's called Der Laute Punkt, and we we made some some fun shit. You know, we recorded a a mockumentary at the ORF studios. Um, What's the name? It's called um, give, me a, give me a minute. I think it's called something with Johnny Bulb. I don't know. Johnny well, Bob's Johnny Bob's extravaganza. Extravaganza. Thank you very much. How could I forget that? So um, I was basically the executive on that, and um, this is when I started working with bands from from the more um, progressive uh, corner of of Austrian music. I would say. So I was a little uh, cocky idiot, and I thought I could handle it, and um, so I started the the, the label um, Pantare with uh, the intent of um, having artists that are like a little of the beaten track, which is funnily enough uh, an album title of um, Mother's Cake. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. So yeah, this this was kind of the um, the route I chose and I signed, aside from Lausch and um, Mother's Cake, I had um, um, Parasol Caravan on it uh, in, the, in the beginning and we started, we really started in 2015. So it, it took me like uh, two and a half years, uh, three years. Um, after the first record came out under my under my watch uh, on Gap Music to to to, to finally get a concept out uh, and a, a logo and the CI and whatever, so that when when Pantare happened and um, I have a, a friend of, of mine here, like yeah, so Julian, say hello, hello. Julian and, is and a the, regular yeah. uh, site uh, person on on the regular on the side. <laughs> a regular patient talking to talking the microphone. To Talking to the microphone, dude. No, but um, Julian Julian witnessed a lot of it and helped me also helped me build the brand actually. So um, a lot of his photographs had I think they had a very big impact on on what we were able to communicate because um, obviously the music was the music was best um, like like the story of the music was best told in a live setting and and Julian was like a genius capturing the moments there and um, it was kind of it was kind of weird because we. Like uh, the guitarist of uh, Paris of Caravan, um, uh, his name is Beati, probably. A... I interviewed Paris of Caravan and it was so, a failed interview. Well, uh, Beati is... Be I, I <laughs> fucked up. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> well, Beati, Beati is um, a very talented manager himself and um, we worked together in the beginning and I wanted to expand even further. I wanted to start a, a booking agency, um, but we weren't able to hold... Um, to hold up to our promise in that in that regard, so Berti um, moved on. But in the beginning, we started um, hosting shows in Vienna. So it was kind of like I think 2015 was the first like when we when we started it. We got some 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 funding money, some grants, and um, we hosted pretty nice shows like two days ev uh, events in the Stine Wien. So this was um, kind of the beginning for my uh, professional uh, like really professional life in a label sense. And all of this happens after you studied or during your studies? During my studies. I, I started studying again in um, 2014. So basically uh, parallel to that. Funnily enough, I studied uh, public publicity. So this it made a good match for my what I needed. So it was exactly what you needed. Uh, the, yes. So you, did you learn stuff that you actually need? Yes. Like, especially in the sense of um, uh, work with... Uh, 
media outlets i i feel like i i really profited from the from the study so there's a saying in german that's called uh, was bringt die uni <laughs> die uni bringt nichts i can't i can't agree to that totally i some part of it is true yeah but yeah so i i got what i needed out of it and with the concept of pantari we were able to find a distribution so this is like the, the conclusion of the story um we signed with uh, rough trade uh, germany like this is a distribution company that is uh, very focused on the on the local market and uh, uh, in gsa and we had, yeah we started pretty wide we had um we had access to their distribution service via another label but it was very expensive for us so it was very good uh, to have at the time and also like what we did were was working you know like the the bands we put out actually sold some copies and which is yeah which is uh, rather rare i guess in the, at the moment f for the physical distribution stuff because everything's changed so fast uh, basically parallel to that so i was rising while the shit was falling basically <laughs> yeah. you could you could put it that way the times are changing you know? true and i'm i'm really like i don't regret it it's it's fine i, I moved on from it but um obviously we like there's some setbacks when first band tried, uh, decides to, to leave the label but it was mother's cake basically they they moved their management to to innsbruck or to, to a role which i can totally understand and they they found a way um to be able to move on and to press on and to really try it with their music which is also very unique and i i had my difficulties with that obviously but um emotions sure that's why you do it right you, i mean you get paid shit and then you're basically left with nothing for a while but um, i think it's they say the experience counts and uh, probably they are true on that one yeah getting uh hit it on is also an experience but it's something that you want to avoid yeah sure you can't totally avoid it you know that's life right but you grow on it i think and, and it's um i'm really i'm really glad they they did what they did and they basically brought the glory home to me as well so i was like i was able to communicate for myself that um it's also my success and it it's it's fine and I'm, i'm i'm happy for them and i'm i'm happy for the way it, it went actually right so uh at pantere okay so pantere what about uh, okay first before we talk about pantere let's talk about third one the clear records yeah clear records right so clear records was like uh, like a lot of bands approached me because they they liked what they saw with Pantare. So on, from the indie sector, in the rock sector, they do it like, yeah, it seems like something going on there. And it seems like a new thing that's happening. And I was talking, funnily enough, uh, mainly to Salzburg, uh, artists from Salzburg, um, namely Gospel Dating Service and Please Madam. And I, I actually ac accidentally uh, got to know Dominic, the lead singer of uh, Please Madam at the, at the uni. So another point for the uni i guess nepotism <laughs> nepotism <laughs> no it was like this, this awkward um hello round where we're like uh you, you should uh um, how do you say in, in english vorstellen introduce yeah, yeah introduce yourself right yeah in the, in the introductory round and i was like yeah i'm i'm, I'm jonathan and i run a label <laughs> he was like five uh, five guys later he was like yeah i'm dominic i play in a band <laughs> like okay let's talk at least and It's a wonderful friendship right now. So he's he's working as a producer uh, at the studio, and he really, um, yeah, he, he connected with my dad as well. So they they um, produced two albums together. Now working on the third, and it basically worked out um, extremely well. Especially since the whole band is very um, motivated to to get shit done, and we were a good team. So I I was like the complementary part for them could communicate their um yeah whatever they had you know like music wise this was the, the beginning basically and uh, and another band approached me it was gospel dating service um also with beati uh, as a booker so this like happened 2016 so it was very fast after that that i, I put out the second uh, label so i got some kind of momentum going i would say and yeah this worked basically very fine we, had, we put out music a lot 2019 was a little shallow for for myself and also a point where i was like okay this is going on for the fifth year soon and how can we keep up the pace also about uh financial stuff because um the budgets were like shrinking and the the market was getting worse like you couldn't sell copies through um through uh, 
uh, sales anymore. It was like you have to you have to do it yourself. You have to be on tour and. Oh, you yeah. mean you mean you can't earn money with with yeah, uh, with uh, from digital sales or? So, well, it was it was a, a time where like especially um, rock bands struggled converting um, their fans into a digital uh, zone because there was a skepticism going on, like a lot of a lot of it, and I think it's completely fair um that there was skepticism there should be skepticism still and um there's a lot of, to criticize about the whole system as it is now it developed in that direction and so it was hard it was a hard sell you know then corona hit and i was i wasn't actually too like i mean obviously everybody was pissed off but um for me it was a good time to rearrange myself also Basically, I come from the management um, side of things, and I wanted to go back there anyway. And um, so for me, everything went a little more quiet uh, on the two labels and gave me time to develop a plan for, for the thing that I'm running now. Well, it's, it, it proves that uh, uh, in a way you were successful because what I noticed during Corona, it's like 80% people struggle and there were 20% of people who established who, who, who I was like, oh, I, can, I can finally relax and have a vacation and think and because they yeah. were touring all the time doing all the work all the time so you're one of those people okay cool nice to meet you <laughs> <laughs> well i mean the time was was really successful successful for us we had like ames was uh, not always ames um the dead name is amy ward and uh, we had like some german pop uh not the schlager shit but um it's it was pretty pop pretty much pop music uh, in German language. We were pretty successful in Austria. We had like a number one thing going on uh, with a single. And it was, it was pretty pretty nice. We had that in 2020. So I think it was kind of a contra to anyone else's shitty time for me. So this was kind of the, the basis for the success that we had after that. Because of uh, like whatever, like we, we got so much airplay that we had a bigger budget for public, uh, like for the LSG fundings, for example. So this... Um, but you mean like air, airplay, uh, all collective, online, radio, everything? No, I really mean airplay. Airplay. Mean You mean radio? I mean radio stations, yeah. Like the biggest station in, in Austria played this, um, like I think 140 times or something like that. So this is when you get the... Licensing stuff. Yeah, like the, the Tantiema, the royalties yeah. that they have the to pay. The real one. The radio, the, the radio royalties, they have to pay for them be, being able to place um, yeah, yeah, yeah. commercials at LSG. And, and another person I've never met who, who actually got money from, from Airplay, like, you know, like because usually I talk to independent artists, you know, they're not in a, they're not so, you know, successful or whatever, right? Like you it, was some, of... it was something completely new for me as well because I, I was used to being rejected by radio stations except for FM4, South of Pain, for example, or sometimes the Sound Portal in Graz with some bands from, from Styria, for example. They were like uh, Ultima Radio. I used to work with them as well. And um, Ultima Radio, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so this was um, like completely new for me. So we had this number one thing going and... So it was suddenly it was the other way around. I wasn't I wasn't making the calls, but I was, <laughs> I was getting called, so it was pretty weird for me, pretty weird situation. But I enjoyed it, and I was able to dip into the maybe the more successful ponds of of the music industry. So when Ames told me that um, they wanted to change name and also gender, it was for me it was kind of a setback, obviously in the, in the beginning, because I I was like, okay, we were building something up very very well there in a time where everyone has just fucking had a big problem with everything like there was no only problems you know so um in that in that time we built something very very huge actually and it was acknowledged being acknowledged by media outlets and other artists here in in, in austria so we we set the clock to zero and it was kind of tough for me but um in the end i think it was um, the right decision because we were going more in a, in a heavy rock direction not not like heavy rock in the sense of um in a sense of um, heavy rock, like the genre, but it's more, it's heavier, I would say, which is more my center. And also since I play in the live band, it uh, is a lot of, it's, it's a lot more fun to, to tour and to play. And I think it's, it's going in a, in a nice direction, music, musically as, um, as, um, I know this, you're talking about Ames, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I noticed because especially when you, did because I know Ames before Ames, right? I mean, didn't know personally, but I was keeping an eye on your label. You actually we met 
digitally first. Yes. Digitally first because I made the music video for uh, Pero Pero. No, uh, Pablo Inferno. Pablo Inferno. Yeah, Pablo Inferno. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I knew because you wrote. You had to write a press release regarding the music video, and then then right. you wrote uh, really nice stuff. So I wrote to you, and that's how we got to know each other. And then finally, years later, we met person. But uh, yeah, the, uh, Ames and Amy Wild. That was an interesting. That's it's like uh, just uh, from the perspective of of. Uh, artist development this is interesting because it's like rebranding different vibes different different uh, different feel and i know what you mean about the rock stuff it's going into it's just like a kind of a new genre in a way that 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 uh, like be not trendy but it's like it, i i see it more often there, there's there's a certain aesthetic that's it's going into an emo and goth uh, direction aesthetically but i think there's some depeche mode in it musically and uh, also some placebo uh, Linkin Park stuff. Yeah, oh, that's, it's pretty. It's pretty sweet. It's like a. It's like a, a punkish uh, myth with goth. Uh, yeah, and lots of uh, uh, not leather, but you know the the <laughs> glossy latex stuff, <laughs> yeah. right? Ooh, yeah, yeah, and pink hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, but how did you decide? Uh, I mean, it, you are a manager of Ames, right? So. Uh, did you know where to go regarding the development or how did the, 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 the looks, everything got developed? Because it's a quite a drastic a jump. It's a jump, yeah. So I was always managing bands aside from running labels. So I was um, starting with Mother's Kick, as I told you, and then, then I, I used to do the management of Lausch. And then after that, I managed a band from Vienna called Gudrun von Luxemburg. Is a rave trio, live rave trio, pretty Don't nice. Know. Never heard. It doesn't matter. It's pretty sweet. You can check it out still. It's still out there. And um, they were signed with a label from the from the UK with, with BMG. So uh, it was pretty huge uh, back then in 2017 or 18. They signed with them, and I started to work with them 2000 um, end of 2017, I think. I was never just in one genre. I, I didn't have to prove it because of the of the thing with two labels in different genres. So I'm, I was just going for what happened in my surroundings. And um, Julian, the, the drummer uh, of Gudrun von Luxemburg, was teaching actually at the at the Gap. And so we had a kind of conversation going how, how things were with the band. And it, their old management was getting a little... I don't want to... I don't want to shit talk, but um, it was at the point where they couldn't work to get, together anymore. And he wanted me to take over and I got some spare time so i did it and after that they the band was kind of dissolving and like they they had personal differences it wasn't <laughs> I, I don't think it was my shitty management i tried everything i could to fix that but um it was kind of the, the, those two guys were just not working together anymore although they were successful like we we broke they they had um they had like a they owed themselves money and after 10 years under my watch they were just finally break even well, which is a big 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 actually thing and yeah. they could have gone from there and they also got like crazy stuff i have never s seen before like uh, sync deals with uh, the ubb and stuff like that so with the austrian um rails railroads um which was like completely new for me again so i, I just enjoyed the experience and i i but what do you mean, like uh, licensing music to to every bill? Yes, or? yeah, for for online commercials, whatever. That's good money. I did. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> it was not that. It wasn't that good, but it was okay. And um, so we we I just just did whatever I had in front of me. And Amy asked me one day, funnily enough, uh, while the other band was about to break up, um, while Luxembourg was about to break up, and I said, yeah, okay, I want to try it, and. I couldn't make a fit um, with the music on my labels because German speaking music was something completely new for me again. And I was like, I don't actually want to do it. But if I want to do it, I want it proper and I want to do a management uh, job and handle all the things, um, including labels. So I was, we were, we remained indie. We, we never gave away the master rights uh, since today. And which was uh, kind of, um, yeah, we can get to that later. But it was, it was, um, it was a challenge basically so when when i started to use uh, started to work with with amy um it was figuring out everything like again completely from zero because like the, the system works basically the same always you put out the music you try to promote it the best way you try to spin it up give it a give it a drive and um put it out there 
play. And Amy was bringing a lot to the table. So there were fans, there was, there was an audience, there, there was a song that actually was a hit before everything else. It's called Liebesleben. It's a pretty sweet LGBTQIA uh, hymn. And it was working for, for Amy and she needed somebody to manage that. And it was easy work for me at the beginning. So... How did you know Amy? How did, did you come? I taught her actually. Like I also worked, like, did workshops on especially uh, funding stuff, like like um, cultural fundings and. Um, and Förderung, kind of. Yeah, Förderungen and um, also crowdfunding stuff like that. Right. So like, okay, how to gather money from different kinds? It yes, can be, like uh, how to, yeah, to yeah, build yeah. a budget basically. Yeah, basically. As a as an independent artist, and um, I think that's exactly why she asked me because that's what like what Ames need, needed back then. so, And I was able to help, I think. And right after that, so we, we played a, a supporter for Conchita Wurst, which was pretty nice. It was a big thing. February 2020. And then it was a hard stop, right? Like we had, we had some shows um, out there for October 2020 and we had to cancel them. Like we, it was kind of unlucky for, for us, but we had luck in the whole, in the whole mess. Um, with the, with the number one hit. So, yeah, I mean, it's like, this, it just happened, you know, <laughs> I can't really, I wouldn't, I would never, um, like maybe I would, but I have never um, forced myself upon any artist. I would never do that. So like, I'm not the guy. Oh, you mean like, like let me manage you and be. You, yeah, yeah. I, I would never write like a, like an email saying, Hey, I'm Jonathan. Yeah. You, I mean, you were busy already enough with your stuff. So yes. So if, if people approach me and uh, if they know what I'm, um, good at and if they can um, yeah acknowledge that and um, if it works in, on a human like a human level this is also very important like <laughs> some people you can't do it you know like you can't work together with them because it's too much um, effort to get the basic shit going like emails or communication with each other so it worked out with Ames and I'm very happy that it did what 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 is the role of the artist manager Basically, you should know about everything. You don't have to be perfect in, in everything uh, regarding the artist, but you should know how things are supposed to run, like who pays who, what, and whatever. Um, it's good if you know a lot of um, different people in uh, different places, I guess, um, or at least to have somebody who is able to hook you up with the right people. It's a lot of uh, communication. It's a lot of email writing. It's a lot of planning. It's a lot of... Um, summarizing what you have already done also to formulate where the where you're headed um translate music into a economic context i would say this like it's yeah is like that the metrics how, how close are you getting to the artist on 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 a, on a personal level you know like uh, buying coffee and stuff <laughs> yeah basically like ames and i are, are, are friends are close friends i would say we, we share a lot um so, private stuff so when we're talking about aims it's probably it's this uh, you have like the, the closest relationship from all the previous experience as an artist manager this one is like the one that is you can probably truly say at least from from what i know about you that it's the proper artist management job kind of yes i mean i i, I did i i love to work with it, all of them so I, I told you that julian was a friend of mine before i started working with him and i know i knew how he was like his way of uh, thinking, his train of thought. And this is so important, I think, because if you're not like-minded, you can't achieve anything, I guess, because you have to you have to, to settle on, like you have to, to formulate the goals, right, together. And if you're not aiming for the, th the same thing, it's very hard. So, Or it's good also, that, that the person yeah. has a concept of the, that there's a goal in general. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I had, my, I had my management jobs where I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't deliver what the other person was aiming for so I, I wasn't able to do it and uh then we just left it there you know and it's fine i mean you can't you can't have success with everybody it's not i, I don't think it's possible except for when you rick rubin and just say this is good or this is bad right even rick rubin started somewhere true and maybe he wasn't right about everything <laughs> wow well, it's it's a, you, you don't have to be right about anything you have to right. From what I know about Rick Rubin and, and, and uh, his interviews, it's like, do your thing, believe in what you're doing, do the end. True. And then maybe it will work out or not. That's, 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 that's what I learned from all these interviews. Hard work, yes, you need it, but you also need to be lucky. So sometimes it's just, you know, you, you never know. Sure. 
totally totally true i mean you have to be on the right <laughs> it's, it's, it's very it's a platitude but you have to be on the right spot at the right time so with the right music and it's um it's not that easy always but like as i said i, I, I dipped into both sides like the, the things where we were stuck as a as a team and we couldn't move on or get get anywhere and the other the other way around where it was just easy you know what's uh what's uh, the most important quality in an artist management manager as a job i'm pretty sure i know what you're gonna answer but i wonder if you're gonna answer that it's 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 a mixture i think probably being able to compromise oh i didn't expect that okay also because i mean you have to you have to make do with some situations and you can't you can't really expect everything to go your way and i think it's like there's an approach where you have to just push through and every everybody has to do what you're saying i don't think that's the right approach i think it, we're all humans and i think if, if something doesn't work and it may be a little bit um disappointing at the time when things don't work out or takes take too much time till they work out or really don't lead to anything but still i think that um you have to see the human side of it and if it's not working out it's not working out but it's not the end of the world so you have to move on you have to be able to reinvent yourself the artist and make the best out of the situation basically so also obviously you have to have a good like there's a lot of qualities you need i think you have to be able to um structure uh stuff to and and i have to force myself to do that you know because basically my head is chaos if i don't do anything about it and um yeah so like you have to be able to categorize and um and, and prioritize and stuff like that obviously but also have have to be versatile so you have to know a lot about marketing you have to know a lot about it uh the media system about the about the music industry uh about the branches in the music industry about the players in the music industry so there's a lot of knowledge you have to in the best case have but the most the most important thing probably is to stay motivated and to to find a way to help the artist with the work well, my experience is like a little bit delved into the artist management i was not a manager but i was a how i like to call it conciliary so i was a, i knew from the theoretical perspective how it should be and what and then tried to correct the mistake not mistakes but at least the direction kind of where the band should go and the biggest problem was actually just to convince people to do anything yeah <laughs> or people just don't want to do i mean it depends like for example in your case all the bands or most from what i know are already like motivated musicians who like most of them have goals and stuff but there are like other bands who just who say they want to achieve something but in reality they just want to be a weekend uh, yeah. b- band and they have families and and even that is some times too much like I, I worked with bands who said they wanted it and then one of the guys or girls were just like oh this is actual work <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah i can't really i can't really do that so okay what are you what are we doing here right so there were these experiences as well but sure i mean motivating other people to do stuff and also be patient about it that it sometimes takes a longer time for other persons to do something that you're able to do in a very short amount of time is is challenging for me as well and i struggle with it every day still so it's not like everything's easy um i'm not i'm not uh, looking at you aims oh it's fine um it's just it's just that sometimes you know you get a little frustrated with everything but i think it's normal it's like with every fucking job you do there's some things that go on your fucking nerves and you will be annoyed about it but still if you if you can see the, the bigger picture and if you're humble enough to to see where, when something goes right and um, this is something that that for me is something that i struggle with like um, being able to see success still you know so if something happens twice or well, three times like for example being played on fm4 or whatever it wears off a little but actually it's pretty sweet so like but wait a second what do you mean is it bad to be played on the three no 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 but it's not bad about it the thing is that you that you can't really um put it in the top shelf anymore you know like you had that already so okay you had that candy and you have okay you have it again but it's not the same so you want to you want to grow right my mind works like that at least and uh, this is something i struggle with be able to enjoy things that are really good for the artist and for myself uh, or for the for the label that are not like wow 
for me anymore. So all right. So if I, what what is the next step after? No, you're, you're, yeah, <laughs> oh, it's all good. Uh, what's actually like? What's the the next step after playing at the FM Fear, for example? Like uh, depending on the artist, obviously, but yeah. Right, but you know, like FM Fear, pretty much. If you are like in the scene long enough, you will be played at FM Fear. You know, yeah. so. Uh, People need to understand that also it's only like a small step, even though it's yes. a big step, yes, but, yes, it's, yes. but to the next level. Well, what's the next level, actually, after that? What? Well, depending on, on what the artist does, right? I mean, there's so much that you could do. Like if, if you're a, even with a, like psychedelic rock, you can just be an online artist. You can just put out recorded, recorded music and be played in some Spotify playlist, whatever. It could work for you. But since I guess you're aiming at an artist who wants to tour and wants to be able to sustain that lifestyle, lifestyle right? Yeah. Um, there's a lot to do. I mean, FM4 is a good um, point on your ho hopefully very long list of um, bullet points for yourself. But play shows, obviously, try to support um, artists that are a little bigger than you yourself, being able to access new audiences, even if it's... Um, somewhere very remote you have to drive a long way just do it if you can if you if you can afford it and there's um more support than you think there probably is like like you probably think there is for example there's this new um series of of fundings and grants um from the music export where you can apply for if you have a, a show coming up somewhere in uh, not in austria so there's a lot of things that you can do to move on and i think like a like funding applications, some people don't like it because they say, yeah, you have to go um, on your own, you have to be independent. But I say these these tools are giving you the, the yeah, like the, the means to be free and to do what you want to do, even if you have to um, do the calculations in the end and uh, the proper bookkeeping shit. Um, but yeah, you have to, I think, be realistic about that. It, in some way you have to you will have to do that anyways if you're if you're gonna be successful hopefully you have to do a lot of bookkeeping so um it's a good preparation for um the real life yeah no you can think about your project you know like if you're sitting in the front of this the music for application form for the first time and they ask you stuff like what's the added value of the of the of the band it's like okay google added value what's that yeah. you know? and this is kind of a process and um something to grow on and there's like fm4 is a good um it's a good step, as you said, but there's so so much things that uh, that you can do. Like try it internationally, for example, if your music is um, reaching out for an English-speaking audience, for example, or any language. Else. They really ask, what is the added value of the music? <laughs> yeah, they do. yeah. What's your contribution to society and Austria in particular? Yeah, uh, we we do uh, satanic black metal. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> No, you, you can if you can if you can explain I, why is it good for the country and society <laughs> for the country. No, 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 for real. Yeah, yeah. No, but but could could be anything. I mean, like a little further uh, acceptance of satanic beliefs. <laughs> Probably, I don't know, but uh, I don't know. Like, like, let's say whatever, Kari Kari, for example. Yeah, they they they're a nice total satanic band. <laughs> total satanic. No, but I think oh, they they, they could. Again? They could they could put in there like for example that they're outspoken about political stuff that concerns them like for example fair payment of music uh, musicians and um, also about uh, whatever yeah climate change and whatever this kind of like if you have a if if you apply for a funding and your music I don't know is about that or that topic you can you can bring that into that application which is pretty cool I think it doesn't have to be satanic you know. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm Julian, just, I'm, just trying out, I'm just trying out the fringe cases. I mean, obviously everybody is uh, pro animal rights and pro yeah. uh, climate and everything. And but what about the people that are not? Do they get money? What if I just? What if I'm Sabaton? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you couldn't apply in Austria, but probably they can apply for something somewhere else. No, I, I think it's it's about it's it's mainly I don't know I don't know the exact uh, procedures because I haven't been on the jury yet. But I think there's a jury and. They listen to the songs and they decide on a subjective basis basis if they like it or not. And if they like it, you're in a pool of um, applications that could potentially get the money. And after that, probably those texts or whatever gonna um, pull the weight or not. So don't worry about it. But what I meant was was that this kind of catalyst is like a catalyst for yourself because you have to think about it for the first time. And this is stuff that you have to have 
anyways if you want to make it somewhere else so like if you want to write a press release you have to make your uh, make up your your mind about what you want to say in that for example yeah and that, this is like also for me this is like i have to pull it out of some people like of, of their noses just to like what are you even writing about or what are you singing about what is your what, what do you want to say like so many like this is something that that pissed me a little off in the in the in the stoner uh, uh scene it's it's so it's so much nothingness you know like the people don't know what they like there is no story behind it it's just like a fantasy world maybe sometimes which works <laughs> they just want to be like uh like queens of the stone age guys yes. be them basically like be on stage and be cool and that's why you, you imitate the sound and the look True. but they 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 stay at that level because you need to go to the next level, understand what what you are. And and Queens of the Stone Age, for me, is like it's a, it's a great band, and uh, I think the expression and the the ideas that that uh, they're putting in there in the lyrics, it's just fantastic. You know, like you can fucking dive into it, and you can just interpret whatever you want. But they're so important, you know, like these lyrics are elemental to the music, and the rest is cool and sweet and bam 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 right it, it kicks and it or it grooves or whatever it just needs for the song but there's always like a a thing that is um that, that you have to like you have to think about or that that um they wanted to say you know and this is something that i, I feel a lack of in that in that scene especially in austria it's a little um little imagination so i mean there's there's some stuff going on internationally as well another band that i listen to a very very much is Macedon, and they have very um fantasy like lyrics but always they, they, they always have a there's a background to it so like this album is about the death of a person a relative or cancer or whatever so they they have like a this this themes these concepts that they work with and um this is obviously the i think the way to go the concept uh, album like in a classic way <laughs> it is the way to go in the in a spotify way to go it's probably not the right approach <laughs> Well, we can talk about the, yeah. the music industry on a whole in a Spotify one thing, but I wanted to say regarding the uh, the fantasy world. And uh, the thing is, uh, uh, it's really hard uh, to look into yourself properly. And that's one thing. And secondly, to put it out for other people to judge, yeah. which is super hard. Because, you know, like if, if I like, uh, like uh, Black Death Matter, Co connected with uh, uh, unicorns, like like or some 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 toy stuff, but but that's actually how I or no, or, or you're a black metal artist, but you you like unicorns, right? But for the record, I do not play black metal. <laughs> 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 Me neither. <laughs> yeah, publicly, and then, no unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know that in your black metal small community, everybody will judge you that you're not cool, but this is how you feel, and you know, or or or. Everybody, you just play the music that people around you will support, but it actually it's not you. It's not what you actually sing about or you play about. Sure, it's not. It's hard to be vulnerable. I think to make yourself vulnerable and to, to be open about yourself. But you don't. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You know, like you can you can write about anything, I guess. But I think that is it's very it's very important that you are clear on what you're doing. So either that way or that way. Yeah, or like, a, for example, ABBA, you know? Yeah. They had a clear vision, right? They're not going to sing about violence, and they're not going to sing about some 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 negative stuff. Let's sing about love. So they made a True. choice, they stuck to it. Well, so they're super <laughs> talented, but they're all super talented, so there's a, that. I, I think they bridged the two uh, extremes lovely with Rasputin. <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> no, I mean, like... This, this is a, a classic, right? I mean, or Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac, for example. Like, whatever, they had great ideas. And I, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm just saying so pe so many people are not reflective about what they're singing about. And they don't know what they're singing about. It doesn't matter. The bass player doesn't know what the, the fucking singer does or the drummer, whatever. So, like, they, they, they're not a, it's not a, like a, like a, yeah, a team that is, that, that speaks w with one voice you know it's like it's like i don't care i just want to play four strings whatever you get your lyrics out of my solo please <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right so like like being able to to express it i mean there's there's instrumental bands but uh, i used to work with lemore a great band i love them still and 
they always have a concept behind the song. There's always a message there, even if there's no lyrics in there. And they know it. They, if anybody asks them about a song, they can tell, you know, both of them can tell. So this is something that I mean. Like, what, are, what is the music about? And this is the, this is the exciting thing, you know, like this is, this is what getting people excited. If they can see themselves in there, either because it's just a fucking, yeah, bot to the floor, uh, whatever metal uh, thing, it could work. Why not? If people sing them, but it's not like approaching on an emotional level, I think it's just, just like, okay, this is a lifestyle thing. It's a style thing. And it's a, uh, it's good. It's fine. If, if uh, people dig it, cool. But I'm, I, I'm just saying it's, I pro it's probably the reason why they're not that big, you know, like, so this is like the, for the real big bands, I think is always like the message and the, the music makes a perfect fit and it's complementary and it's exciting. Yeah. I mean, if it's instrumental music, usually, uh, the big thing is, uh, some technical aspect of the instrumental music because, uh, yeah, like for example, uh, I made the music video for one band, the loom of time and the guys, he was playing metal, right? And his concept was that he doesn't care about the lyrics. He wants to play on instrumental music. So he puts lyrics just for people, just whatever. It doesn't mean it that much. But at the same time, he puts a lot of thought into the lyrics. Like each line is, is it's almost meta. He, he, he overthinks it, but at the same time, it's not really important. But each line, and there's a concept behind each song. And he made a, a whole uh, podcast series like breaking down each song, what he meant, why, what he nice. did. That's cool. That's explaining yourself. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a great way to, to showcase how you could use um, technology or developments for your own advantage as a band, as an indie artist. I think that's very nice. Like it's, it's a cool display for that. Is there some like a crucial key components regarding the, the band to be successful? Well, probably, yeah, a message, right? So what about what, uh, what, what, what TikTok. level of <laughs> what level of uh, financial not financial but like like business aspects of like business thinking and in consider like in comparison to artistry? I would say like you have to formulate your as I said you have to formulate your goals and you have to be clear like if you're a band you have to be clear everybody has to be clear about them and has to be able to be that if you're successful so. Yeah, for example, like like how the, yeah, the question, right? Like a practical question. How, like uh, I, once I uh, calculated how much gigs you need to do per year to pay to afford a manager, right? Because manager depends, but takes a percentage, right? But if you want to go into like zero, at least to break even, how many gigs? And it was like a lot. It was like almost like eighty or something. Depends on it depends on how good you're getting paid. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, well, of, course, course of course, of course. No, but uh, but. I don't, I can't, I can't uh, calculate like this. It's like, for, like it depends on the size of the club and whatever and the entry fee. And what, yeah, so, yeah, 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 so it's a lot, I think, to be able to sustain it only with. with um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Only to sustain it, just for people to understand that. Most of the time you have to pay for, for every, everything else to be able to play. So if you, if you have the, uh, the luxury of owning your own uh, tour bus, it's a lot easier, I guess, but. If you want to be on tour with a rock band or a rock um, a trio or whatever, you need a car and it's expensive. So most of the, I guess, like sometimes we, we have to eat the shit and pay f to be somewhere, even if we're running a fucking deficit with it, whatever. It's, it's fine. It, it depends on why you're doing it. Right. So this is not like, I couldn't, I couldn't answer that because if you're only relying on shows to pay you, then something's wrong. I think you have to, I mean, there's a lot of things yeah. going on with the merchandise and whatever. So that this is like, this is the main thing that you can't forget as a band. You have to have merchandise and you have to have some money to be able to afford one, afford some stuff in, in the beginning or to have a graphic designer if you're not, if you're not one yourself. So there's a lot of money that you need or a lot of willing helpful people like Julian sitting right next to you, for example, who is able to contribute to the, to the whole big picture that a band is, right? But me many friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but it's, uh, but it's the thing, you know, like if you hang out, because some people, some people think that you shouldn't uh, hang out. I'm a solo artist, whatever. I just stay alone, but you actually need people to help you out on a way, yes. right? 
Some people see that you have a potential and they will make you an album cover. Right, and the manager is just another person in that in that regard that he probably has some other people who, who are able to help you out in, on maybe a better rate or whatever. But yeah, you have to be very active yourself, I guess, before you have a management. So to, to be attractive, like if maybe that's what your question is aiming at. Um, it, for a management, it's, it's getting really interesting when, we, when, they, when they talk about um, the recorded music and um there's already music you mean it depends on what you're doing like if, if it's pop music there's some like the advance payment is something that a management is um is interested in because they can earn a lot of money in a very short amount of time because it's just you need to sign the contract and you basically get the money even if it's rolling uh advances so there's a world where this is relevant and i think if you're growing as an artist um i would say that This can be very soon, so depending on how successful you are, these advances are very interesting for management. And also, obviously, you have to yeah pull people to your to your shows. So if 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 you have a sold out tour, and um, this is something that people notice, right? Yeah, but usually those bands already like have some kind of dedication, some kind of goals, because you just don't uh, uh, artist already if if an artist can already feel uh regular ba on regular basis uh venues already so it it means that art is already doing some social some kind of social media yeah. some kind of working towards because you can't just make music and just put it uh, somewhere on on youtube and and blow hope for up. the best yeah yeah hope for the best not working 99 doesn't work it happens but it's not so often True. like i mean i would say like 60 of the work is communicating your work Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's what it is. So we're in a we're in a digital age, and everybody's on the phone all the time, and not everybody gladly, but uh, like like there's some people who are like on the phone always, or on the on the on the laptop or whatever, and and you can you can just hope to reach out to them in some way, like cut through the yeah, attention the noise, ceiling, noise. yeah, and read the noise, right? Because you're just one small square on a whole stream. Of, of of social media or whatever and i mean i like i was i was fed up with bands um after the good and luxembourg thing because for me it was kind of it was it was just sad you know seeing friends depart in a bad way because of they're not like able to work together anymore and i was angry a little because i, I yeah i think a band is, is is a very fragile thing you know you have to you have to, it's like a relationship with um with the other people and and you have you have to take care and be responsible about it and and have to talk especially if you're successful i think you have to um communicate all the time as a team and this is something where a lot of people struggle i guess as well well some people are not ready for success or some people That's don't true. want success maybe but maybe it's not about it maybe it's about creative output or maybe it's about the amount of work they're putting in and they're this very big topic i think that people say okay why should i put should i work uh, anything more than anybody else in the band so oh, it's another thing yeah this is a very big thing i think and um i think as long as the roles are clear and as long as you communicate yourself your own human um needs and also like if you say guys this is we're, we're doing well why why don't you Why can't you acknowledge that? Like, if I'm responsible for it, please acknowledge that. So, like, at least you can do is yeah. some kind of applause to that. So, there's a lot of gratifications you can get out of it if you if you be smart and talk about it. And other people are, you know, like, not every musician is a social genius. I know that. So, that's a lot. That's most of the time the reason why they're not um, successful with the band. They're not going far. Let's say like they're this. not far with the project, for example. Yeah. So. Like for me, it was it was way easier to work with a solo artist like right now um, in comparison because you can decide stuff way faster and um, you can <laughs> just, just everything logistics yeah. just like a one per, like plus okay if you have a tour of musicians but still deciding on stuff is yeah, so I mean, much easier. It's something that we like we have, we have to pay our um, the rest of the lineup. Obviously, we have to pay them to to play the shows with us because they don't get any um, anything else out of it. But if you if you set it out if you set it up like this and every every front is clear everybody knows why they're in for and why they're doing it and why they're sitting in the car with you, then then it's fine I think. Um, but this is not I, I I'm really like I'm a romantic person so I I have my I've started my own band um, 
the what's the name dogs versus gods and let's let's see where we're going but you know if somebody struggles in the band and um it happens from day to day um just be there for each other i think that's the best way to go and if if you're not moving as fast as you would like to because of that that's okay too it's so just fucking life you need, you need to have some expectation what did you learn about people while like managing you probably definitely had some like ups and downs you know but some stuff maybe surprised you what did you learn nothing good no <laughs> No, yeah, I, I was I, expecting. Don't trust anyone. I don't trust anyone. Read the contract. Take it to no. Anyone. I think. People I think. Sign. I think. Like, if you're honest to each other, and if you if you find a way to um, express bad bad feelings, bad um, yeah, whatever situations, or if you're able to address them properly with the other person, I think you're doing. I think you learn more about yourself than about any anybody else. I think. Okay, um, what did you learn, man? Yeah, as I said, like the success thing is one is one part of it, and by um, sometimes very um, impatient um, <laughs> impatient um, way of uh, communicating. So I, I want like I had to restrain myself on that um, to be able to to be patient enough to, to wait for the answers and to get the feedback and the drafts and the whatever. So this is something that I learned about myself. But um, I think if you're open with each other and um, try out different styles of communication you're probably getting better at it and um be able to sustain professional or just like if you're making that as a hobby so basically hobby you need to imitate relationships if i mean if you don't know you need to imitate somebody take re recruitment for example to like now you know totally zen open to conversation oh cool dude yeah what's yeah what's let's talk about it let's chill man if you don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. Okay, fine. You know. Well, he can't say that because he's very successful in what he's doing. Yes. And, and he already, have to... he's already in the, I don't want to say the end, but he's like at the top, right? Well, he was probably also same same kind of the guy like everybody else in the beginning. And yeah, probably he didn't even care that much that he wasn't there where, where, where he is now. But um, I don't know, like obviously the, like the, the precariat in German, um, there's a, the, like most of the, Musicians are in a precarious situation. They they don't have much money, and um, in the beginning, and it's taking a lot of time to break and to break even with the project. And you invest basically every cent that it comes in in there. Um, so you have to be able to, yeah, to don't be out of breath in, breath in the finish uh, in the, on the finish line. So yeah, it's a lot to to take in, and you really think it through, I guess. But sometimes it's just fun to just see where it goes, I guess. If we plan everything, it's boring, I guess. So, also, it, it depends. Uh, it depends what you want, right? So, like, what, what, what's? I mean, like all the all, all the terms that we're using, success, goals, and stuff. Like, I, I hate it, right? Like the terms, right? Because it's really like business kind of things. But you need it. It depends. It's just, I mean, it's just, it's just like the connotation about like around it is is. Uh, I don't want to say commercial, but you know, like anti-artistic kind of you yeah. know, goals and stuff. But you need all that stuff. Well, it depends on what you're doing, right? If you yeah. want to make a living out of it, I guess you have to have that, right? Because it's, it's not a dream world. We have to pay the fucking rent, you know. Like, this can't you can't um, you can't just ignore that. I, I mean, if you if you're lucky and um, inherited a lot of money, then well, just yeah. enjoy, I guess. But um, for the most of us, it's uh, and I mean I'm even in a, in a privileged position because I have like I have access to a studio and I can I can bring a lot to the table if I would join your band, right? <laughs> this is not an application, by the way. But um, my my um, I, I I I'd love I'd love to give it. I don't want to take advantage of it like from from anyone uh, else. You know, like I just don't. If I if I'm part of the band, that we, we don't have to pay the rent in the rehearsal room, so I I, I can bring that to the table. But that's not the point. Um, the point is that um, for myself, um, my, my goal is not to be able to live from the music that I personally write or if I, I'm just realistic enough and everybody in the else is real, re like can think for themselves. Um, we're uh, a little old, I guess, for that. But probably like if it happens, you know, we're very like we're privileged as fuck if, if that happens. So um, the, the goal is to, to do everything the way I would do it for another artist. So treat myself <laughs> like I treat the others, basically, and see where it gets me, right? That's my goal right now. 
you mentioned age i noticed that i mean i mean first of all when i found out about the music industry how it works i got depressed because i was like okay 99 percent of okay 98 percent of people will can't make it because to get into there and to have a sustainable life kind of life it's absolutely insane incredibly hard and you and like the age for example right because you it's good that you mentioned age because i if you just take any famous band just see how many albums they had before they became famous or had some kind of success it's it was already like five years so i mean the beatles how i think they were like 18 or something like this when they started right uh, they had the 10 year career that's also another thing there's uh each band has a uh, musician kind of knows the window where you can have a chance but it doesn't mean that you still can have a chance later right but there's higher chance that if you start younger and you keep it with it going you will somehow eventually will get there true Maybe. i mean what was it something like that in your experience it makes it makes a lot of sense i think when you're young and you have a lot of friends who are enjoying rock show and bring them to show it you know where it get it gets around in these in these years you know like are there any bands that are from the like uh, in austria or that are going up who are like super young leftovers yeah we we supported them actually with names and they actually gonna record I, am i allowed to say that i was the first uh, English speaking interview with leftovers <laughs> nice <laughs> well i i got to know them in december like the, can i say when when this is right now this is january yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure and and um so it's a very recent experience and like I really, I really liked the energy that that was there at the show. I mean, I felt old, but when I exactly, uh, I showed it to Julian. Like, like I yeah. remember, I told him, like, hey, I'm gonna interview the guys or whatever of tours, and I showed to Julian the music, and he's like, I don't get it. I was like, exactly. Right. That's why I want to interview them because right. this is the hot shit. That's actually, true. I don't really remember too much. You, you said that's like I don't get it. I probably never... said I feel old. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I, I felt old. This, this I... is exactly the thing that I felt like. Okay, maybe I don't get it, but people like it, and fine, I'm old. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And and that this is something I think probably everybody gonna experience. That you just turn on the radio and you don't fucking know what's happening there, right? So um, I grew up in the like when I was in the early two thousands. There was a lot of MTV going on in my in my uh, screen. So like I, I actually listened to fucking hip hop music, whatever. Yeah, you know just was there right but um i think the leftovers are kind of a like a re readdressment of, of of grunge in, in an austrian way so it's, it's pretty cool and the people behind it are very giving and also not very structured persons but i think <laughs> well you had some experience during the tour i had i had i had a, i had the, the, the joy of uh, being a support uh, artist for them and and I had to, I had to think, I had to think a lot about my own uh, old punk uh, project. So it was kind well, of like no we we started we started out as a as a Nirvana cover band when I was seventeen. So and it turned into a punk project because we went faster all the time. So basically, that's what happens there on the on the stage, and it's pretty it's pretty cool. So just give it a, give it a spin and go to the show. It's pretty cool. Yeah, leftovers, and especially I saw them then play the live show after the interview, and I saw the fans. I I I, see, I saw that they have fans before, you know. I could see that they're like going wild with it, and then during the show, so it was the fucking arena. I mean, this is big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I was saw them when there was like like twenty people in the crowd, and it was mainly their fans only, you know. And nobody cared. <laughs> I mean, only only the fans <laughs> cared, you know. Everybody yeah, sure. else. But then you could see that the the, the the group. But before they sang uh, in English, and it was not working out, and they switched to German. Yes. Yeah, it was German is not again. a different atmosphere, even though sounds a little bit different. Uh, same, but still, you know, completely changed everything. Yeah. True. And I mean, you don't have to like it, I think. But I think for me, German in in the music it grew a little since I've um just my job right now and. Um, do it um, for a long time and be able to do it but i mean this is like some that's what i meant with the with how it it catches people you know like on what on, on what level it catches people and i think there's a desire in the german speaking world to have music that expresses something in a way that english speaking music is doing it for 
ages right now. And I think there has never been a gr like a real German speaking grunge project before. I'm, I don't, maybe I'm like, maybe Tonsteine Scherben. And they also re reference a lot to it. So they, they covered the a song. They recorded it at our place actually. And my dad produced it. And so this is some, some reminiscence as well, but it's, yeah, it's working. And people like, I mean, they, I've, They just sold out uh, two Berlin shows and whatnot. Yeah, like they're really rising star in that in that regard. And um, I think um, if if we don't understand it, maybe that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, but I knew I knew immediately that they will go far for just because the feeling of okay, uh, like the, the feeling okay, uh, we've heard this before. I was like, that's exactly why it's gonna work because it's like the '90s uh, nostalgia uh, in a way. For for us, it's nostalgia. For them, it's a new world completely. Yeah. Right, the, the music, and, but it was going slowly, slowly building up. You know, it started like five, six years ago. I remember noticing it, and now it's like finally like kicking in. Yeah, I mean they they fucking sold out the their hoodies in in three in three shows. You know, like everybody was just buying their their hoodie, and I was like, nice. It's it's still working. You know, like people are digging it, and the, the you know the small punk punk kids turned i don't know 18 or 19 showed up to the show and they fucking threw their fucking money at them you know like it's yeah. parents money <laughs> yeah, probably but it was just like it was a sense of it was a sense of um you don't have to be a commercial artist in a sense that you have to to um adapt to a to a to a to a radio station or whatever like yeah, a that's big, the, the nice message. so it's like a it's like an edgy thing it's it's really it's really um raw and it's it has power and still still it's successful people it resonates with with the audience so that's the cool thing to say yeah it, i mean they, they they basically like it's like the beatles man the beatles in the beginning were a pop band you know like a, absolute they, their fan base or elvis Presley, the El, the fan base were teenage girls yeah. you know the same thing here you know if you can if you if the artist uh, can like uh, like uh, get The stuff from the soul that's connecting the the, 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 the teenage yeah. girl, <laughs> you're golden, man. <laughs> yeah. But not always, not always. No, but I mean, like, like in the like, the, the the Nirvana comparison is, is, I mean, they they are very cheeky. I think some songs have like Nirvana is like, also like uh, music is no, also pop poppy. Like, true, uh, but I mean, for for the leftovers, there's a there's a song. I think it's it's basically the same as. It's it's almost the same as a Nirvana song, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it smells that it's a spirit, yeah. right? Like one of the. I right. remember. It's like the, the 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 chords are just there's one switch, but it's the same. Yeah. So. Um, it's an homage. But but still, it's it, it it resonates with people because a lot of young people have experienced a very bad time during Corona, and I think are very like when we talk about messaging. I've been talking to that uh, to to Ames about it um, as well because what are they singing about? Right, the leftovers they're singing about what. I want, you know, and this is something very interesting because psychologically, I think it's, I mean, we're in the age of the I, yeah. so I want, I want to have, I want to have something, right? This is a very important sentence. And I think it expresses a desire that a lot of people share, that they want to be able to express what they want and not what somebody else wants them to do. So I can understand, I think. Like on an intellectual level, on a scientific intellectual on the level. On scientific and and <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like from from perspective of grumpy old man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I, I agree. Like uh, I, I like the songs the most, and I actually don't even care these days about music. But really? If somebody. What happened? Depression. <laughs> 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 no, but if if somebody uh, voices the stuff that I. Would like to voice myself that's lovely i don't have to do it myself i will listen to that guy yeah yeah what he, whatever he said he said well, i mean we had rage that's against cool. the machine right they, they have the leftovers right now so yeah who's the lucky one in there i don't know we are <laughs> i wanted to ask you about the because you mentioned the music industry right yeah. so we were talking about the role of the artist manager in the in the in the artist life let's say like this then the artist who should be what about the conditions while we're talking like uh, talking about you know the motherfucking music industry right? yes as the elephant in the room everybody knows it is spotify and um yeah i mean it works like if you if you turn back time um 10 years ago it was very hard to as you said punch through the noise 
and there's some there's some um, I think some positive um, aspects of the of the uh, Spotify or DSPs uh, other DSPs uh, system that there is there's curators there's some there's a bottleneck you can go through and it's accessible to everybody that's a positive thing I think there's the possibility for you to there's another channel basically open to be successful at or in and it's easier to get heard like to be to be able to um, reach new audiences via algorithms and playlists and whatever so this is the positive thing that the, the obviously the bad thing about it is that it's paid like shit and um i think this has been addressed so much that yeah i mean you have to like you can't protest you can't boycott and it won't matter that's the point so you have basically you have to play along well, basically spotify is i always said that it's in other channel, it's free, but I mean, for free, I, I mean, you don't get money. It's right? almost free. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get money, but at least it's uh, it's a platform that where you can send a link to somebody and they immediately can listen to it. You know? Yes, but they can also measure and charge you by the um, metrics. So it's a, it's a little bit of a trap, I think. So if you're sending out Spotify links that have not a lot of uh, clicks you're probably not doing something well for yourself. So yeah, it you have like you have to play if you play the game, you have to Oh, you mean you have to play it how the game is. Okay, so it yes. means you have to play by the rules. You can't you, you, you can't need skip to it. go into the play uh, I mean try to get into the playlist, get the rotation uh like you have uh, to the algorithm uh, think about that. Do the, right? do the Spotify things as you would say on yeah. YouTube, you do the YouTube things. But yeah, there's no there's no way around it, I think. But what it can do is like you can like it, it's like it's a two-edged sword, right? You can measure success in a completely different way. You can see if something works. So if you put something out there, if it's a new song, and you see there's like you can right now you can even see where people are accessing it from. So if it's their own their own uh, uh, playlist or is it their own um, audio. Um, exploration stock whatever they yeah. have or if it is an algorithmic thing or if it's a curated playlist so there's a lot of um things you can get out of as a music manager for example um but everybody can everybody else can too and so if you're not successful on on that platform because you're not fitting into the whole circus you know um then you have a problem i think and this is something that makes it harder for bands that are a little bit out of the box and especially in in, in uh, rock music i think a lot of people suffer from that and also they still use facebook yes well that's their problem <laughs> yeah, yeah I, know, <laughs> but, I know i know i know yeah well what i meant is like uh, they're so stuck i mean not all of them of course but most of them are so stuck in the way how they like to do stuff you mean, you mean bands or basically they did, huh? bands or bands B bands especially in the rock metal you world. like bands <laughs> I don't like people in general. <laughs> I hate bands, no. <laughs> so, uh, so people are so, they don't want to even learn, even open an Instagram account. At least it was like that a couple of years ago, right? So Spotify, algorithms, uh, uh, awareness, engagement, TikTok. TikTok. Oh, yeah, actually, we need to talk about TikTok also. You yes, know? It's, it's terrible. Com it's completely, you know what I learned recently by experimenting myself with TikTok? TikTok, you can get result in one hour. You will see immediately if it works or not. Yes, and it's more and in comparison to YouTube uh, or Instagram, uh, YouTube Shorts, Shorts. Yeah, YouTube Shorts. You need like seven hours, and then you see if it goes up or down. Yeah, uh, yeah. in TikTok, it's very responsive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and I think I think the platform itself is not um, bad at all. I mean, it's like it's it, like with every social media, it it, it went um, like this, like an exponential curve in the infinity basically but the problem is that um the whole and this is a truth that i had to learn um unfortunately like the major labels um they only look what is going on with the artist on on tiktok or on another platform that really works out uh, are, are you hot do you have the followers yeah. audience are you, are you doing it right so yeah. Yeah. and and there's actually things that like they measured by the tiktok do you have a tiktok moment so if there's something going viral you're on the game and like like i'm talking game here right really like the big they're ready to invest advanced payments right yes, they're ready to invest. 
So um, it's stupid, I think. I mean, because obviously there's a young audience there, which is good for an artist to access these these uh, target groups because um, they will grow with you if you if you can if you can um, how, how how should I put it um, retain the customer <laughs> retain the customer yeah um, persuade them to keep on following you so that's how I would, I would put it to, to take you with to yeah. take them with you right uh, I don't I didn't want to say earn them because it's it's people still yeah um, but um, yeah so that that's that's something that every social media was good at in the beginning like facebook for example when you had organic reach that was crazy i mean when i started the whole thing and we put out the off the beaten track um series with mother's cake it was just a fucking excitement you know it was amazing because we had we had um reaches over six million people you couldn't do that anymore with the with your facebook page at all obviously and you can't do it with the with the instagram page that has um i don't know five thousand followers you can't do that um it's gone it's gone it's it's gone forever and it's fine and uh whatever and that's why that's why myself is done <laughs> no it's not to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was it was very easy to to reach out to a lot of right now it's very easy to reach people but they're starting to charge money for it and it's I, I start because I I started um, placing ads there. Oh, yeah. I, I tried it myself. Uh, right. So, they, but that's, that's what they're pushing for right now. I got it, like I did it once, and I immediately got a call from them. A call from this like the TikTok central in Europe. Yeah, you wanna you wanna talk about uh, how you could improve your ad placement, whatever. And they got a follow up email, whatever. And I said, yeah, 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 and didn't do it. But um, like it's stupid. You have to ha you have to pay at least 50 euros <laughs> to be in there even and it's only pushing up the reach it's not really I, I don't know like it obviously had some mistakes in it because i could see on the other on the other end the metrics of the clicks and stuff mm -hmm. so that we referred to another link mm -hmm. and it didn't match it was i don't know it was something else um cra really crazy like the metrics were off and um i'm not trusting that so um, this, are, this is not the way to operate the, um, the platform, obviously, but I just wanted to try it out. Um, the way to do it is just to think of something funny or uh, interesting and do it in front of a camera and do it in several different ways to be able to have the chance in, like, to, to get viral. So basically that's... What I also noticed is that TikTok is more regional. So if you're like in Vienna, Austria, it will push it more to the local areas because of the language speaking and all that stuff. And YouTube is more global. Yeah. So if you if you post at the right time, you might have gone viral in the United States, you know, depending on your language, you know. Also. That's true. Especially with live streams. That's but yeah. I mean that's obvious. Um that people are um turning like switching the channel to your channel if if you're live at a time where they're awake or they have convenience time, like uh break or <laughs> lunch yeah. break or, or in the evening when they're getting home. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's the same with as with Spotify. It's like a, it's a, it's an opportunity, and um, if you're doing it right, you're on the on the on the right end of it, I guess. But a lot of people don't like myself. I, I couldn't do it, I guess, for my for my own project I, I, right now. I'm, I feel I feel too old for it. Really, I can't. I like I don't want to even try it because every time I open the app, it screams at me, and I just want to shut it down immediately. Which I learned, you can turn it off. You can switch it off, actually. Um, screaming people. Yeah, like the <laughs> screaming stopped. But um, still, I think it's, yeah, it's another opportunity, I would say. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's like Instagram, how it was uh, when it was organic, right? So at the moment, TikTok is like super organic. You, you can, you can, you can get, it down. you can get if you, you, if you're doing the right things. Uh, what the TikTok uh, thinks you should do, <laughs> then you have a chance because, and they want dancing people. Isn't there some platform that is not super, um, you know, mechanized and, and squeezed for every dime? LinkedIn. Pornhub. LinkedIn is very, very nice. But actually, only, it's only fans. great. Only fans. I was about to uh, say, only fans is the new yeah, creative I platform. I recently heard that only fans is not a porn platform. I was. It's not in the first uh, line. Of things, it is officially not a, it's yeah. not. So, but, yeah, but, but yeah, very like, there's, but there's some, there's dedicated. some, some uh, I think artist-related stuff um, that, that 
that very uh, much reflects that I think Patreon um, is basically the same as, as an OnlyFans account would be like you give access to exclusive um, content that um, you can only access by paying amount of some uh, amount of money per month or whatever. It's, it's just the OnlyFans has this vibe because the, 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 what we know about the people who are there, it's one thing. It's like, it's just kind of just happens. Kinda. But this is, I don't, I, I, this is a subscription model, right? Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. So basically, basically it's Patreon or, or like with Ames, we, we tried out or try out a fan club, which is a little more uh, shallow from the, from the, um, starts you can only can donate two euros a month and you're in it basically in the in the fan club and um, you have access to everything but you can you're you can give more so this is some it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool thing and we have like around 100 people in there and it's some money you get for that from that and it's also some some way to communicate with with your people in a different way because you you know that they will open the message we were see talking it. about the mail, right. mail subscription kind of because instagram is not going to show even if yes. you make a post to your favorites hit the bell like and people they're not going to show it unless it's cool so uh but obviously it's not like like i mean we have around eighteen thousand followers on aims profile on instagram and we have 100 people willing to pay for the content so this is like the conversion rate basically yeah. and i'm very open about it because you can look it up actually so i'm just saying it's there's there's way around there's ways around and obviously on instagram and tiktok there's some corporation stuff like corporate stuff going on where you can if, if it's working for you as an artist or as a tiktoker or instagrammer you are able to make some commercials with uh, with some brands and that's that's good money actually so yeah try it <laughs> you wanna try. I, I propose you wanna uh, say chain SMS. Look at those choosy boomers. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. I wouldn't like that either. But uh, yeah, I mean, let's let's see. There's, I'm pretty sure there's something else com uh, coming up uh, soon. Um, I mean, threats like the the, the Twitter um, dependence. Uh, sorry, X. X. Yeah. <laughs> Um, dependence from from Meta is um, a little bit of a rising thing right now, but is it already that? See, I I'm not know. up to I, date. I made my account private, so it's like I need a space for my own. I'm so still on like Twitter, I, and I will never. So that nobody, I, I don't give a fuck about followers. I just you want can, to cry somewhere. You can you can shout out your hate into yeah, the yeah. <laughs> and endless all my reaches posts of the are, are like like rage, like <laughs> software. It's <laughs> like a pillow where you can scream. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I, I need a place, right? Yeah. So I mean, like to to summarize it, I think it's um, there's a lot of opportunities we didn't have 20 years ago, and some of them are um, some aspects of them are really good for us as artists i think and as, la as a label but sometimes are, like some things are really bad and having to pay to be able to reach all your followers for example is obviously the bad um, side of things but yeah it's an old hat i guess yeah it's 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 the same problem but uh, just looks different uh, it's the uh, same a play in the club if you want to play in the club you need to pay if you want to be on the radio you need to pay kind of payola kind of thing uh uh, it's not as I mean it's bad but it's not as bad it's just same shit it's, you just need to work even harder <laughs> right because for example even for the subscription model you need to provide the content so it means you need to yeah. like extra content so you need to work on it. And then, well the, the approach on, on, on that platform especially uh, fan club is that you don't have to overextend yourself so people know that's only two euros a month and they are doing it to support you and not to nag you about not having special content. It's a Greenpeace uh, uh, business strategy, you know? Basically. Huh? Basically, just for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's projects. a good idea. It's a good idea. Just give us two, two euros and you will support the cause, kind of, right? You will I mean, support the artist. Yeah. That's, that's I mean, there's it. some there's some cool things that we do there, like, for example, uh, spilling the tea if we're um, preparing a release or... Um, want to go out with a big show then we can announce it there in the first place and people will write it down in their calendars and whatever so it's very good to to access your most active crowd you know and that's what i really like so 
and it's exclusive information for them yeah which is it's, yeah, the, it's the, a fair trade-off die hard fans right i mean this is like yes. the fans fans right this is yeah. what you want yes right? and i and i like you have to you have to um figure that out yourself but in that regard the fan club of ames is very like i know those people most of them i know them because i have uh, been on tour with them like and they attended the shows so i know who these people are and i'm trusting them not to um give away whatever we um, tell them so this is also trust trust basis so there's no there have there haven't been any leaks yet so i'm very um fond of that and i hope that it remains like this have you tried the discord channel um no i haven't thought about it actually but it's the same basically there's no it's chat in that in that sense um in in that on that platform but you can comment and uh, answer and because for example i was checking out because i i I don't use discord for 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 its intended purpose right but i sometimes you have to because discord became like a forum kind of a thing right where people can communicate for example like uh, when i interviewed skinned right Mm -hmm. skinned you know the band skinned kind of right so they have a discord channel with like all diehard fans Mm. and then like and then i posted the podcast link there and from there it went up. This is like a perfect opportunity. And I was like, guys, I will soon upload the episode. Wait, I was like, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, nice. we're like cool, super nice people, all well, cool. You know, but because that's just like the thing, right? People are engaged on those platforms and they want to see it, and they're gonna see it. And I mean, obviously, the same people will be able to see your content on on Instagram or Facebook or whatever where they are active. But it hasn't. Like they have to check on you, right? They have to check on your Instagram page if if you posted something new, or you're really like they are diet fans and it just pops up every time. But um, this is a way to make sure that people are being staying informed. And what I also uh, like, if you want some advice, I would um, recommend setting up your newsletter. It's email. It's very email. right. Email. It's it's very old fashioned, but it's still working and it's still working. If you have some spare time or some guy in the band or a girl in the band who is just just able to write up stuff that you do just update. even if it's two liners whatever if it's something hot then just put it out in a newsletter and you you won't lose those contacts and i would i would advise if somebody wants actually to do it to subscribe themselves to some cool bands that they who who does it right and see what kind of emails they send to you because sometimes you know like i i subscribe to a band tiger cup uh, just to know i wanted to get into their private uh, website not private but it was hidden behind the password <laughs> so what I, are you <laughs> I mean i was doing research right okay. so, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. yeah yeah i was harassing also like a guy on reddit to give me but pa- nobody gave me passwords <laughs> anyway right in the end i figured out that it was nothing interesting but uh how they uh write the newsletter is because uh you can really configure it uh, towards the person who is like right so they they write when you, you like open email and you have email from them it's like hello buddy i was like oh <laughs> nice <laughs> like they can yeah. do buddy or they like, i mean they change it they adapt it to, to you to your name or who you are mm-hmm. right but it's just the idea just like oh hello buddy you missed me or something like this you know like it's just like, well i i create we created a per- persona for the for the guy who writes who writes the amy waltz newsletters yeah and he was always already always uh, grumpy about Ames or whatever oh, right. it was kind of fun so i i could just you know all my hate went in there <laughs> with a mask on yeah, yeah, yeah. and um so yeah it was it was pretty sweet and i think it, it spoke to the right audience in the, in the right way but yeah so just be creative just try something out i think it's um it's fun and at in the end if you want to convince people of you as an artist or of yourself or, or your band then i think you have to have some kind of neck or whatever to be remembered by i guess you mean like uh uh on as an artist like on a personal level kind of getting yeah. off a bad head for for bands is so hard like what should we post what should we do whatever let's just like get some brain behind it and, and think about it and think about what's fun in your in your everyday life and what you want to or not fun but what's interesting in your life and, and share it you know or whatever whatever the fuck of, of content you're able to 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 come up with you know like that i mean you're creative right think about something that you want to well, communicate this comes to the to the to the question of uh understanding who you are right yes who you are and not being afraid to show i mean you still control what to show right but accepting it and presenting it it's not easy of course but you don't have to show you all don't your have secrets to, you don't have to overextend no 
I, like, uh, that's example, not what I'm ba- saying. No. Baits, right? The band Baits. How they 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 attitude. They, it's like a meme band. <laughs> yes. Right. They, they, they yes. do. And they it, like memes. It, it, if you know the guys, it it's a perfect fit. You know, yeah. it, it's it's cool. And um, it's they're not the only ones, I think, but um, they make a very good job out of it. And um, yeah, so think about what you want to say or what you want to do or what you not want to do, but don't complain about the platforms that they're. Um, not showing you content if it's just crap you know you have to have some quality in it if it's if it's on the one hand it can be like well made and then somebody should appreciate it but it's not i'm guessing it's not what getting you viral um but it should be interesting in a way and i i can't do that for the artist it's something that i struggle with as well as management um but i know that like there's so much like potential there you know like and and my 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 job would be to yeah work on that like to to see where your strength could lie in that regard but uh, but we should we, we talk about digital stuff all the yeah. time but it's not the only thing you should do because no because uh, it's just like a, a it's a huge part right but it's only part you need to bring people to the platform yes. like you need to physically work hard yeah to get people at least to know that you have an Instagram, for example, right? Hundred percent agree. Yeah. So like it's a it's like a basically a, a pool of people who got to know you in a way, so they can you, you can stick small. around. You, 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 we all start with the same thing, like family, yes. friends, and then their friends around their friends, and then. But you need to tell them, please. I mean, it's it's everybody's doing it, but don't don't. <laughs> this is my personal. Don't send a Facebook invite. Just invite everybody. You know, like to to <laughs> yeah, no. to like my page. No, you need physically to to you to per- personally, personally. Yeah, maybe 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 it's annoying. Um, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm probably the right guy to ask if you if you got a band project. Um, and I know you. I probably follow you. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can be creative about it. And um, I think it was always like that. I mean, even even the Beatles had to think about what they wanna represent at some time. Right, and they did it. And they they had their moments of self reflection or whatever. So just do that. Don't let everybody else take um, that from you as well. I mean, it's it's fun. It can be fun. It can be very frustrating as well. It but it's it's yeah. it's trial and error. Try, uh, yeah, because it's not the same strategy for each person. Because yeah. sometimes, I mean, it depends. Maybe like for example. Like uh, you have a studio, you can uh, organize a, a live stream uh, concert at your place, right? Yeah. For example, M- maybe that, somebody yeah. doesn't have, but they have something else, something really cool that they can like use, you know, like see what you have, right? And do the best out of it or ask somebody like <laughs> you want to hear <laughs> what to do, right? Yeah. I, I mean, like like the, 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 the things that are possible in a studio are not obviously something different, but it doesn't have to be about quality in a sense of being well made. It's just about the quality that you bring into it. Like if it's funny, if it's edgy or whatever, like just try to think of who would like to hear, to listen to your music. Oh, here we go. And the the, 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 buyer the target, persona. the target <laughs> group, right? The target group, but it no, is but it's important. It is important. And, and you can, the, the cool thing about those um, platforms is that you have a lot of um, information, metadata that you can get from it and see if you re- re- reached out to the right people. Yeah, they're just a simple. If like how, the people how, who had you, you had in mind, so it's a reality check thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, just the age, you know, like like you. You may be singing about stuff that your audience doesn't know about. You know, like they can't relate physically. They don't know what it is. You 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 can't think about. Oh my God, my this this cat is not working anymore, and Pac-Man died. <laughs> you you <laughs> can just do cat videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, like, like I mean, dogs versus gods. We're gonna share some memes. You you um, cannot do cat videos. No, no. You're shit out of luck. Well, the cat videos are probably involving dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Like we just we we thought about that, and uh, like we have an Instagram group, uh, like an uh, like an internal thing, and we just just send memes around, you know, like stuff where it's dogs versus gods, basically. So yeah, I don't know. Like this is something that we haven't figured out yet. We we're not on that stage that we can say we want to put it out there. Just reserve the Instagram channel, whatever. But it's gonna be in there in some way. I mean, it's the obvious thing, and we didn't name the the band like it because of that but it's an anagram yeah and it's also it it reflects something that that we 
that, like it's a feeling, right? All right. Are we the dogs? Are we the gods? We don't know. All right. So, so okay. All, all, all the all the advice that we did to, 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 to told to people, we need. To, okay. So you probably tried to figure out who you are and what you want to sing about, yes. right? Did you have like a? Did did you write it down or like? Oh, you understand it? No. no this this project started when um, my friend Jay moved to Vienna um, from weddings. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the Vienna. band. The band yes. weddings, right? And we like I was. Um, I was oh, not auditioning, but I was asked to maybe uh, a substitute for the, their bass player, and I, we, we rehearsed once or twice. It was pretty fun, and but they never they never uh, needed me um, because I think uh, the guy was available or wherever, and we started um, talking. And Jay was uh, I think not having a great time in Vienna because it was locked down when he moved here, and it was hard to just. <laughs> go around meet new people and that's what you should do if you're moving to a new city and i was next to his uh, label um i was one of the only persons he knew here so he didn't have much of a choice i guess <laughs> no but um and you said that you didn't harass anybody i did the... no. <laughs> no but um the cool thing is that i just joined him um at his home studio and just listening to his stuff and then I said, hey, maybe we should... Slowly blended in. Well, he had, he, he's a left-hander. I couldn't even play his instruments, you know. Oh. Like, the other way around, it's well, wrong. Challenge yourself. It's wrong. It's like, yeah, like, <laughs> or play it the other way around. That's a challenge. Um, no, but we um, really just started um, jamming a little and just recorded some riffs. And then he was just, you know, like, sending me the recordings the next day with complete lyric. Like, a completely, it's a song, you know. That's cool. So the guy's a fucking um, prodigy, I think. Beast. And um, yeah, so that's that's when when it started, and we just asked around um, and got some guys who are um, in it now. Yeah, but um, I think it's it's about an it's like a lot of anger in there, you know. Is it your frustration with the music industry and what? No, it's not. Through? It's not. It's mainly not my lyrics. It's. Um, I, I make notes, but I think it's an expression that um, I can very much understand because it's a feeling of kind of, of end, end timey, you know, <laughs> like we're we're in the end game here, probably, I don't know, but um, the rage that you can't really do anything about it, that makes sense. So this is kind of um, the story and it it um, it is a little bit like um, we're having some uh, window in, into obviously into uh, Jay's brain, but also into our collective brain. Um, stories of about madness, about about yourself looking in, into your own uh, abyss that is you, right? So, um, yeah, it's uh, it just, it caught me whatever he, he was writing about. And um, we're very outspoken about um, if the lyrics match or not, so... And you, you mean also like like uh, we have examples of people writing stuff and nobody's listening to them, right? And no, no, oh, and then after what happened after, it's like oh, we didn't know. I, I mean, but it was always there. It was always there. Yeah, maybe I don't know. I, I don't hope. Um, oh, being for each else. other there yeah. is really important. Communication, right. is the openness. Yeah, but um, it's also like it's also very um, yeah, it's a very intimate. Um, it's a very intimate thing to talk about the lyrics because it's obviously it's in there, you know, like, and why is it in there? You can talk about it, you know, it's, it's interesting. And, and it brings, it brings you closer together, I guess, as a, as a, as a project, as a team. So, yeah, um, I it's think it's also scary, you know, when you get to know yeah. each other like, yeah, uh, you know, on, on some <laughs> stuff, like, dude, I don't want to go there, but you kind of, you know, I mean, if you're a friend you, you and got, if you listen to it, yeah. then you just, just jump in and that's it. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna talk about it at some point if you're pursuing that as a career. So you you will be confronted with your inner demons or with the demons of the other guys. So let yeah. the guy say, "Dude, it's all fake, all right?" And you're like, "Are you sure?" And then <laughs> <laughs> and then each time it's like, like, "Oh man, you you wrote some some horrible. It, it's all fake. It's like, I so, I you, you want to talk? No, then... I could just kill a man, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm just um." I'm just glad that um, I'm I'm doing music again, and um, that whatever I come up with as like guitar riff, but there's a lot of, of, of 
jazz music there as well so we it's very interesting for me to work with another person who has a complete different understanding of rock riffs than i have but we still make a fit together that's really weird i haven't experienced that in, in a way and um it's the other way around as well like jay always says like i wouldn't i wouldn't have come up with that shit you know and that's that's like yeah it's cool like you appreciate it in the yeah, other person it, it, yeah. it, 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 as long as it works it doesn't matter like what 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 your influence is. maybe he maybe he loves table swift you don't and that's it you know <laughs> but, but yeah but it works probably i love taylor swift and he doesn't i don't know <laughs> <laughs> We'll, no. see, we'll, we'll see references to Taylor Swift yeah, songs. No, but I'm just saying it, it's, it's, it's very good to, to be able to appreciate um, a quality in another musician and to um, profit from each other. I think that's very nice. And it, like I, I missed that for a while. So I had a band till 2018, I guess, and we didn't play after that. I mean, we even supported um, Bad Religion in the arena. Oh, oh, name oh, drop, this, name drop. This guy took some very kick-ass photos of it. Julian, the, the photos, and yeah, he's like yeah. sitting Analog there photos. silence, not, not, not dropping names. No, it's really, it's really nice. Um, photos. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, and then, then I had four years of basically no creative output from my end. And so it was mainly business, you mean? Yeah, it became a business. Like it was only. I mean, I mean, business. like, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. you were like an yeah. artist uh, manager all the time, yes. an label manager. Also. Yeah, and, and performing artist, but not in a sense that I was I was uh, creating music. Yeah, yeah, you were supporting. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. Just the oh. bassist. <laughs> <laughs> just the bass player. Yeah, I started the the new project as a guitar player, but um, I had to acknowledge that I'm not good enough as a lead guitarist. That's why Snorri is doing the job right now, <laughs> and he does it really nice. All right. So, what, what's the music for you then? It's like a, a way to—is it a, a classic way to express yourself, or is it something like a deeper, you know, exploration of yourself? Have you thought about it? I have sometimes, you know, like I don't know. I, I don't write the best of lyrics. I, I had I have wrote, written some lyrics, but um, the, the like I play around with the guitar a lot, and mostly with the acoustic guitar at home. I don't have a studio setup here, and. If I want to try some riff out, um, I go to the studio and um, plug into my amp and just fuck around with it. But um, yeah, sometimes weird things happen, you know, like um, like end of relationships and stuff like that. It can trigger something and then some. sometimes you just come up with a new idea and it's a whole song or whatever. So it's just very... Uh, you know you mentioned pop, like I, I because yeah. I can ask, if there's because usually I interview rock people, right? Some, but uh, uh, can we say that I'm closer to pop kind of music, or is it still something? Me, yeah. uh, Ames. I, I'm Ames. Ames. Well, it has a total pop approach, I would say, but it's getting more edgy the, the further we go along yeah, the road. I, so I wanted to ask, like, like the, the worlds, like, if if, if <laughs> a, a rock-oriented person asking about pop, how's that world actually? You know, is that so much? I mean, you know about the pop and not pop. Is it? Is there a drastic difference between those worlds? Well, I mean, if we're talking about the big successful rock bands, as we said in the beginning, uh, for example, Queen of the Stone Age, I think there's a f there's a big pop element to it. So there's like on, on that side of things, there's not a big difference, I think. But um, obviously, if we're getting into the league of, I don't know, I don't don't want to do anybody um, anything. Uh, like ill minded here, but uh, Taylor Swift or whoever doesn't write their songs by themselves, you know, um, this is something completely different. This is a fucking industry. It's a, it's about where the money goes. You know, where the money goes, there will be more money that comes from it. So it's kind of a calculated thing and um, can be very disgusting. I think um, because it's not. But it still can be really good. Also, it can. Yeah, I mean, the weekend. <laughs> Come on. No, I can help. <laughs> I can tell you, Michael Jackson with a thriller was a super calculated project. Sure. Everybody were hired there for a specific person to make a super awesome album. But at the same time, I of course make money, but it still feels like they wanted to make the fucking awesome album, right? Yes. That's there can be a lot of, I mean, why not? There can be a lot of uh, effort going into a pop product, but it's a matter of how much money you throw at it till it gets there you know and i'm i'm sure there are like I'm, I'm pretty sure that lady gaga does a lot herself um for example and 
very successful. So I'm, I'm just saying there's some, um, or, or uh, Beyonce, for example. Yeah. I mean, you have to give it to her. She's a fucking monster, you know. Beast. Beast. Mega monster. Yeah. But she I mean, is. Yeah. I mean she, she's a machine. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Like, and, and this is something that you have to acknowledge. Like, she's on top of things for 25 years now, and or 20 years at least. Um, so that's, that's crazy, you know. But, um, yeah, in terms of developing an artist, the, the industry is a little, uh, yeah, the pop, I would say the pop industry is a little more calculating than the rock industries because with rock, I think it's more or less, if a band works by themselves, they're going to be caught up by some major label or label, bigger label that will give them another opportunity to be bigger. And it's that even then it's a, it's a, it's a money game, obviously. So if you have a lot of budget to promote stuff, you're going to be able to access a lot bigger uh, markets, you know, like other art markets where you haven't been able to be, um, be uh, present at, um, for example, like um, Mastodon is like for me, <laughs> we, we had them once uh, before uh, in, the, in the interview. And I, I think that um, they, with their major sound, like the major albums they put out uh, in, in the mid 2000s, they reached to a new level of, uh, of uh, reach a audience and whatnot, you know, and, and they became a lot more poppy after that. Not all of uh, not all of their fans will probably like that. So uh, I think Blood and Thunder is still the most listened to song, uh, and it's uh, still one of the most raw ones they put out there. The album, right? Yes, but I mean, it's like like the system. Like in the end game, it works the same for everybody. I think, um, yeah, because you have you can get the attention by putting money somewhere. So you can get that, right? Uh, but you have to have the money. So you can just get it if you're successful or if somebody really, really, really believes you're going to be successful with that. So that's that. But I think that, for example, with bands like um, De Wolf or um, Greta von Fleet or even um, the Italians um, from the from the EC, what's the name again? Maneskin. Uh, well, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. or, or even Lordi or whatever, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, This is another different, completely different um, biotope, you know, the ESC stuff. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's a yeah, different level. Completely different. But you're like, once you're through that attention um, ceiling, you're on, you're in the game, you know? And I mean, there's some, there's several ways to it. So you don't have to have always the same, like we said it for the social media, but it's the same with the grand strategy of things, you know? There's several ways to approach uh, the project, whatever, whatever way works best, I guess. And being support of a big, bigger band is one way to go. Whatever. I mean, each band, no matter which genre or whatever, uh, if they're successful, they become pop. But not pop in the sense of it's pop music of, of uh, uh, girl uh, music for teenagers, but yeah, the, it's in the the approach, popular yeah. music, right. right? And even if you see, watch interviews with, uh, like, for example, Metallica, right? They, or like Red Hot Chili Peppers. Or Muse, for example. Muse, or Muse. is a perfect... And they all talk example. in the language of, 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 of like business. And like, yeah. oh, we got to reach, when, uh, you know, and when blah, blah, blah. Like it's, a, it's like they're talking about money. It's like it's supposed to be not cool, right? But it's just reality. They have to deal with it, right? Like, it, 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 like in the beginning, you don't think about it. But at some point, you have to think and then naturally become corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on if you're like, if you're a purit Puritan about art you know stay at home like the, the whole <laughs> thing is fucking screwed yeah, <laughs> I can that's, tell you that. I mean, that's why i said that. like when i was studying yeah. it like uh, understanding the music industry i was like this is this is this is fucked up and uh i read a book who's like uh, the whole idea is to teach business of like uh, i forgot so like the music industry or something this just the contract clauses you know just what mm -hmm. you can find in contract if you look it's like i'm out <laughs> i'm yeah. out You have to know it, you know, like, and uh, you need to trust the lawyer because the lawyer can be on it also, you know. But that's the thing, you know, you have to, you know, your own shit. Um, that's very important, I think. Um, yeah, actually, it's another thing, self-education. and Actually, uh, wanting to know that's because if you don't want to know it, you, unfortunately, you'll get screwed. Yeah, you have to know what your rights are. You have to know what you're, what you're um, eligible for and whatever. So, yeah, I think it's very important to know that. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the true essence of art, whatever that is, you know, 
I think it's, as you said, it's popular music we're talking about. It's rock and pop is basically the same. It's the same appeal. It's about being heard by a lot of people, create a sense of community with these people, I think, with the audience, make people feel like they experience something on in concert or on radio that they can relate to with other persons. I think that's very, like, the social thing about entertainment and music or whatever is a big one. And a concert, in a sense, is also a ritual, you know, like, we go there, we expect to be entertained, whatever. And we go there with friends and we go there with people we like and we experience it together, you know? And this is something that... Um, This is probably the art in the popular music, I would say. It's not about having the best song or having the best guitar licks in there, whatever. It just needs to resonate with enough people that it matters, you know? That's my that's my approach about popular music. And in that sense, rock music and pop music are very similar, I think. Yeah, very similar. It's like, especially when we went to Ames uh, concert and it's completely different crowd from what I'm used to. And you immediately see this is a, a collective. This is like uh, people with a common... Uh, yeah. life let's say like it's a common ground common basically. ground yeah. right yeah. and it's the same thing with and that's that's the thing you know like like a, regarding the collective uh, experience of it which is re you can find people if you're looking for people of your group of people you yeah. can find it like, right. so, like, like through people. music right like minded people and it's like I mean this, it has been like this for ages yeah and it's it's quite cool to see that none of the the developments are is able to break that you know You won't be you won't be seeing people you don't expect like in a like 50 percent people you say who are they what i mean these are not like me <laughs> why am i here <laughs> you won't you probably won't have that i have to i mean there's there's some like in the pop music obviously there's some people like uh the beatles or um, paul mccarthy for example where they have like gathered people over the ages and it's like you can't really it's just like general opinion that they're good right something as with for example Ed Sheeran I wouldn't go to a fucking Ed Sheeran concert I, I can say that I appreciate that he is popular but I'm not appreciating his music it's not like like Paul McCartney where I can say he plays the evergreens that are have always been there and uh, will always be there um, so yeah it's just um, probably another shade there but still um, I think there's a lot of Things that are in common between rock and pop. Yeah, to conclude that question. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, in, uh, it's a little bit different, but it's the same. It's, yeah. In in ideal world, you you play your music and somebody discovers it and falls in, in love with you and stuff. And I guess the most the most big the, the biggest difference is in the scale of things. I think pop music is a lot of, as I said, it has more money in it. <laughs> Well, it's more money because it's completely, yeah. it's more oriented to, for, if we're talking about yeah. pop in the sense and about of taste still. Taste. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a, it's industry. So it's yeah. completely different. And approach. it's a broad, like it, it has a broad approach. So it, it wants to be listened to by a lot, mo like the most possible people. Yeah. So as much as, as that's whereas, why. whereas rock is more about an attitude, you know, right? You, 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 you talk to people with it, like who have the same, attitude and it's probably always a little more niche -y. although i think i would say that that generational um change that is happening boomers getting older even <laughs> whatever yeah. but also like like the classic rock like classic rock listeners are sometimes open to new stuff so it's kind of intermingling like like people because they started to watch tiktok also <laughs> <laughs> that, For that's example. how they discover new, new no, music but, but maybe they they like new bands even though yeah. even though they're 30 or 40 years younger than them like maybe they do make the same music as they had or used to like creative from fleet or yeah they wolf or whatever yeah? but they earned their place as well like they had to play it through the whole muddy shitty the same clubs. thing i mean the, the, and the, now the, they're the, somewhere the greta one fleet was is a perfect example okay yeah. we're gonna sing we're gonna copy that zeppelin yeah. and then we'll make our <laughs> own stuff all right yes but it's gonna be a lot of shit from yeah. everybody but We'll get through it. Sure. I mean, it was an approach. The no? same. It's the same as uh, Kadava, for example. Yeah. Uh, they, they they sound like a 70s band or like yeah. an 80, 80s uh, whatever desert band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's just. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but they're active now and they're they're doing good stuff. And they, yeah. Pretty cool. All right, man. Like, uh, what plans do you have? What 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 do you want to share? Like, what what do we need to follow? Like, uh, 
like uh, about it, regarding your your personal project where we can well my 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 um biggest target is to after over a century <laughs> in, in the industry i still i just want to be outspoken about it it's just it's always a struggle to maintain yourself and maintain a normal lifestyle i would say from the from the financial aspect of um things but also about the mental health uh, that comes along with that most of most of all so um if you made it or if you made a living if you make a living in the in the industry i really um as a I'm, as a, I'm really concerned about it. <laughs> as an entrepreneur i'm just saying i'm, I'm really um respecting that and what what, what with whatever music you're doing that um you're doing good and um for me it is kind of the yeah the crossroads right now so i'm, I'm just being uh, straightforward about it so this or next year it, something has to happen that i'd be able to, to to maintain that um dream of mine so i'm i'm not um sustaining myself um from what i earn right now but from what i earned back then so i have a, a little bit of a buffer a buffer right so i know that and we'll see how it goes but i'm fine with that and um i really enjoy the challenge as well and also there's some cool stuff coming up so i'm pretty sure i'm gonna be fine but i just wanted to put that out because i know a lot of people struggle and think about how how are they doing this and how will they whatever how can i do it too and i say it's just it's just a fucking struggle just hang in there try your best um to stay sane and this is the the basis for for success i guess so this is what i'm trying to do staying mentally sane um while uh <laughs> yeah juggling all the tasks that i'm um that i'm allowed to do i have to say because it's a, still a privilege to be able to to work with music and um to be able to be of some importance to some people and as i said that's what i uh, what i am glad to be able um uh to be part of at uh, as, as as aims uh, management um because a lot of people are um really getting something out of it and that's um really beautiful thing it's, it's really it's really nice nice should people where should you people follow you if they want to follow you, the, the the your progress or they should follow aims they should follow aims in the in the first place you can follow breakdown records you can follow pantari you can follow clear records you can follow yoni gabla wherever you want wherever you find me all um, right you're open for yeah. following <laughs> and uh mark down dogs versus gods for your next uh, yes. show we're, we're gonna play i'm not sure when that is but hopefully soon all right Yoni, thank you very much julian thank you for participating also listen to black metal <laughs> <laughs> all right Thank That's you very much as well. <laughs>